Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched and Reviewed. Today's movie is all about family values and having none. Look at this box. What's going on here? This box has no address on it. It has no information anywhere. This is a box I got on my own to store movies that have been personally handed to me. So since this movie didn't come in the mail, I figured, well, I have to unbox it to live up to the show's name. I can't just have invisibly received, watched, and reviewed. So I put the movie in a box and thought, this'll count. This is an unboxed right? This movie was given to me by the wonderful Jimmy Screamer Claus, who I'm sure many of you know as the director from Where the Dead Go to Die. He was wonderful in person and just very nice. I mean, he gave me all these DVDs. It was so nice. Ruby, I love you too. But he said, there's one that he really wants me to do. I said, of course, I would be happy to do it. So, what is it? Well, let's see. It is Ensuring Your Place in Hell. So Ensuring Your Place in Hell has four different little movies on it. It's sort of like psychic TV, only five hours shorter. I don't remember exactly what he said, but he told me that it's fucking sick and fucked up. He told me to skip all the movies on the disc other than one, and that one is called Cooking with Huck Butt Cow. Bot cow. Bot co. Cooking with Huck Bot co. I think it's a documentary style thing about a guy who tortures his family and his parents and stuff like that. So with that said, let's hope this is good. Let's hope it's fucked up and let's do it. You guys ready to start cooking with Huck Bot co? I know I am. Hi. So this movie is exactly how I described it. It's about a guy who really hates his family. For Christmas this year, I'm making my father a fruitcake. I don't like my father, but this year, I'm gonna have fun. And by fun, he means making the most disgusting fruitcake he can imagine. And he's actually a good cook too, so you'd never be able to tell that hidden inside these desserts are really gross things. After mixing the fruitcake mix into this big pot, he then takes it out to the street to get his final ingredients. Yuck, he just had a homeless guy come spit in the pot of the fruitcake mix. He then starts paying the people $3 to spit into the pot. And he's got a lot of ones in his hand, which means a lot of spitters and a lot of nasty homeless people hawking up spit. And he's paying them three bucks to do it. After spitting into the pot, he has them look at the camera and say, Merry Christmas, Kurt. Kurt is his father. This Huck character is clearly a disturbed individual. I mean, why is he doing such a cruel thing to his father? Did his father make him this way? You know what I'm saying? I mean, why else would he be doing this? This next guy's spit was especially disgusting. I mean, look at the way the wind catches it. Merry Christmas, Kurt. It's just gross, don't you think? So once he's collected enough spit, he bakes the fruitcake and then goes home for Christmas. It's just kind of jumping. It just is total home video footage now. It looked like a tape you would find in somebody's attic, you know, labeled Christmas 97 or something. That must be the father. I think I wore that shirt in my Retarded Tron 2 review. Biggest shirt regret I've had in this show. And I'm wearing a fucking shirt that says Drippin' Cock. As the tape rolls on, we see that Huck has three siblings, a sister and two brothers. He also has a mom who kind of reminded me of Gail Wells from In Our Garden, which if you have not seen, order the movie. It is hilarious. It's time to open presents. Uh-oh, he pulled out the fruitcake. It's wrapped in tinfoil. The family is delighted by the gift, and the mom starts examining it for errors, as if she's some sort of food critic. The color is good. The mom's smelling it now and totally approving. Like she's at a dog show, lifting up its tail. Oh, I ask it's a 10. These are gross, huh? So the next morning at breakfast, the fruitcake is served. 
Just opened it up. Dad's at the table. Jesus, he took out a fucking machete to cut this thing up. The blade on that knife is this big. Even though this fruitcake was made for the dad, I was gonna say he cut himself a big piece, but he's passing it down the table. Like, take one, pass it on, take one, pass it on, so they're all eating it? Making them all casualties of the prank. He just ate a piece of it? You just ate another one and my, my mom is now eating it. Her glasses are huge. After devouring the spit-filled fruit cake and loving it, and it froze and now it's fading to black, and, then, and it says fruit cake, directed by Huck Botko. So it turns out that Cooking with Huck Botko is actually a collection of five different short films, all sharing the same theme. But he targets a different family member in each one. In this next one, entitled Baked Alaska, his mother is the target of these culinary crimes. He just picked up roadkill and is scraping all its... He's just scraping it up and putting it in the Baked Alaska. He was scraping them out the way you'd scrape the inner walls of a pumpkin while making a jack-o'-lantern. You know, just really getting everything off of there. What's that? Like a huge dead rabbit? He's shaking it over the bowl. He's doing this to her because I guess she packed up all her stuff and moved out to Yellowstone Park to live in a trailer by herself. And he does not like that. He's scraping maggots off the dead animal and putting them into the yellow mix. He bakes the Alaska and surprises his mom with the dessert. And there's like 12 dead animals in it. Being the food connoisseur that she is, she gives it a good look before eating it. I don't know who she thinks she is. She thinks she's fucking Tom Colacchio or some shit. Oh, that looks wonderful. What is this, Rob? Rob? I thought his name was Huck. Or is Huck the guy filming? Or is Huck a man playing a guy named Rob who really hates his family? I don't know. I couldn't tell if this was real or fake. Is this real? I mean... I assumed it was real just because it looked so authentic, but at the same time I was thinking, no, I don't think so. So I was kind of all over the place, and that was part of the fun. Just wondering, is this real? Is this fake? Is this man as really fucked up as he seems to be? Well, she just took a big bite. She eats every bite of the baked Alaska, and of course she loves it. And that concludes that segment. Baked Black. Baked Alaska, directed by Huck Botko, editor Mike Cunt, camera Kate Murphy, 1997. So with credits like that, it really does kind of confuse you. So is this fake, or is it real? It's in this next segment where he prepares his most disgusting and sickest meal. This one is aimed for his sister. Looks like he's making a cheesecake for his sister. How he came up with this idea, I don't know. It's a very creative way to get revenge. He meets a couple online and they're willing to donate blood for him. To put in the sister's cheesecake. So he's interviewing these two goth people who have hepatitis B. It's close-ups of the needles going in and the blood filling the syringes. He's getting quite a bit. He pulled the needle out and there's blood forming all over her. They then write Merry Christmas on top of the cheesecake with their infected blood. The next night at Christmas dinner, he serves the meal to his entire family. They're cutting into the cake. Everybody's got some. Grandpa, sister, mom. She's eating it. She likes it. Squirm. Everyone is gobbling down this cake, totally oblivious to the fact that they're all eating hepatitis B. Lots of different close-ups of the... There is a kid eating it. And that's the end of that one. Cheesecake. And now it's the brother's turn. Our hero is giving the brother a mystery gift. It's a pie. So what's in the pie? Well, let's take a look back and find out. One day earlier. 
For this next meal, he hires a whole bunch of male porn stars and has them blow their bullets into the pie batter. There's a bunch of men sitting around a room and now there's a close-up of a guy jerking his cock and, the, and his dick is facing the camera. It just went to triple X. I could not have been wearing a more appropriate shirt. There were dripping cocks all over the place. He's just jacking off on the couch like this, looking at the magazine. The pie's on the ground. They're showing it all. And he's coming on the pie. We then go back to present day. Now they're all eating it. Pie for everyone. After they all swallow the graham cracker cream pie, the credits appear. And behind the credits are... And it's all the dicks. We then see the family all waving goodbye to the camera, saying, Merry Christmas, bye-bye. And that's the last we see of the family. But there's one installment left, and this one is called Julie. So this one is about these two guys who really hate this compulsive lying bitch named Julie. They really want to get revenge on her, of course, and it turns out that one of these guys has... I have VD. So before his VD clears up, he makes it his goal to fuck this girl to spread the disease. Unfortunately, his VD runs out, so he has to come up with another means of revenge. Emphasis on mean. He pissed into her herbal essence shampoo. He's scrubbing her toothbrush in his ass. Shitty toothbrush. Shitty toothbrush. Pubic hair on her soap. A jar filled with cum. And then, as if it was her cat who pissed him off. Oh my, and he's mixing the cum in the cat food. So in the end, he says, well, I didn't give her VD, but maybe one day I'll get syphilis. Here's to syphilis. They toast and it's over. End. Flash, flash, flash. So that was Cooking with Huck Baco. At first, I wasn't sure if it was fake or real. I mean, I really thought it was real, but by the end, I started to think that it was fake, you know? Either way, it was still entertaining. This guy really hates his family, and it shows. So what do I give Cooking with Huck Botco on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a four. Didn't expect to see so many cocks or so much cum. It was good, it was fun, it was fast moving, and it was cruel and twisted. I didn't care for the last segment as much as I did the other ones. That one kind of got boring at times, but then it did have its payoff in the end. But overall, I found this mean-spirited Christmas tale to be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you, Jimmy, and I'll see you next time.